In the world of combat sports, sometimes animosity begins inside the ring. Yet the biggest rivalries tend to be born outside of it. Much has been dubbed in this promotion, you know, when, when friends become enemies. But you kind of said friends, more like acquaintances. He's just a friend of my family. At the end of the day, he's not my friend. He's not nobody I talk to. Proximity is a double-edged sword Where's my belt? that can breed contempt. Next time I see you, you better have my belt. And I mean that. For while iron sharpens iron, it can also cut deeper. And in the sport of boxing, nothing cuts deeper than disrespect. You little. I'm you little. little. I'm little. little. You little. I expect you to be bigger, little dude. And nothing is bigger than proving someone wrong when a title is on the line. That's my belt. Atlanta, my belt. <laughs> For Olympic sensation Shakur Stevenson, his undefeated record and a shot at conquering a second division have led him to this moment. Everything that I do is better than Jamel. It's going to mean everything taking this belt from Jamel. While for retired Marine Jamel Herring, the best performances of his life have yet to earn the WBO Junior Lightweight Champion the respect he deserves. I'm so motivated for this fight because people keep doubting me. After months of heated rhetoric, the time nears to settle a fight built out of bad blood. I'm going to your ass. I'm going to this up. Make sure he know that. This is Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Herring versus Stevenson. For Shakur Stevenson, being touted as the next great American hope for Olympic gold meant the weight of great expectations and a lingering sense of injustice. I was America's best hope for Olympic gold medal in 2016. I lost on a split decision. You know, 16 was very, very emotional because he was the guy. Everybody feels that you won it, and they tell you didn't win it. You don't want to lose when you have a family. You don't want to lose when you're taking care of your family. You don't ever want to lose in anything, so that's Shakur. Shakur hates losing, but I think you have to lose to win. So that loss made him who he was, and it made, put him where he's at, and it made him work harder. And because he needs that, because that's what feeds him, and so it just made him better. So for him, he's just going to keep winning. I understand that I really don't like to lose. I think that's what motivates me the most um, when I'm training, when I'm fighting. His competitive nature is very, very strong. He just doesn't want to lose, so he's in here working hard. He'll wake me up sometimes in the middle of the night. What you doing? I'm going to the gym. Come on. Watching his fights, he's seen something. He wants to work on it. He wants to fix it right then and there. That's the face of a person that never wants to face defeat. Since Stevenson's Olympic setback, one of boxing's most promising rising stars has proven unbeatable in his pro career. A lot of people fold up under pressure. I'm not one of those fighters. As I'm walking to the ring, I'm calm. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to perform. Down he goes. Shakur Stevenson is better with a first round knockout. When I'm fighting, I know for a fact that I got to win every round. 2016 Olympic silver medalist, a blossoming prospect. Every round, if you go look at a lot of my fights, you're going to see I'm taking over the fight round by round by round by round. A shotgun blast by Shakur Stevenson. Wow. Down goes Mosquito, just like that. It's over. You sit down, you score them rounds one by one by one. That's a whitewash. Shakur Stevenson wants to become the greatest of his generation. I got to go in there and I got to make sure I'm a special type of talent. I got to make sure I leave a legacy. Stevenson in full control. I just feel like I've been on the route to this for my whole life. I don't believe he has a leg. 
I'm not gonna get here and stop what I've been doing. I'm not gonna get here and let it down. Mama, mama, there goes that man. Looking to become the first member of the 2016 Olympic class to capture a world title. Circle Stevenson. For a man who once fought with the United States Marine Corps, duty and honor have long been a way of life. When America's darkest day arose, a 17-year-old Jamel Herring was amongst those who answered the call. That looks like a second plane. There's been an explosion of some kind that shook the ground of the Capitol. We're running, we're running! It seems obvious that it was a terrorist attack. I joined the Marine Corps because of the events that happened in 9-11. Me being a New Yorker, of course, it was close to home. I thought I just wanted to do something better with my life. I enlisted back in 2003, right after I graduated from high school. I got deployed the first time around February 2005. Iraq, oh my god. That was a wickle call. I never forget. I'm out there in the yard, and I'm walking, and I just see like a thing of smoke. And I, and I hear it, it would just whistle, whistle over, over my head. A few seconds later. Come to find out, it was an RPG. And it hit the building that was not too far from me. And we just had we just heard whistling again. And it kept coming. And we was getting hit with, with, with mortar rounds. So that was like my first reality. Like, man, this is like this is really happening. Like we're really <laughs> we're really out here. When you go through those moments, even at that young of an age, it makes you grow real fast because you come to realize, like, hey, this is not a game. Like, people are really losing their lives out here, so this is not a game. By 21 years old, I had two deployments under my belt. After those years of those deployments, I didn't know until my family seen the signs, but I was going through, you know, suffering through PTSD. I have problems sleeping, I had nightmares, and I get paranoid. Like, I always have to feel like I have to know each and every exit. I'm not ashamed to say, like, one point in time, I was just heavily drinking and everything. I just wanted to just to throw away everything. My wife, Jen, she, she basically gave me an ultimatum that I, I would go get help or I would risk, you know, losing my family. One thing to get me away from when I was having those demons and issues was boxing. Against the American hero, the U.S. Marine at 32 years old, Jamel Herring. Boxing is actually my, my gateway away from, from hell, as I may say because I always had a way just to vent and release frustration and anger in, in, in a more positive manner, instead of going out there and doing something crazy or something that I would, I would regret. As a boxer, Herring took the lessons learned outside of the ring and harnessed them inside of it. I always think about everyone that I serve with, you know, the men and women, um, individuals who didn't come home from um, those tours, and individuals that, that I actually lost after those tours from like, you know, signs of depression and PTSD. And I always say that you're still representing them. As I know that there were others out there who look up to me. So a veteran came up to me and said, you're a breath of fresh air in boxing because the way you carry yourself. Ooh, ooh there's a bit of a knockdown, huh? <laughs> You know, I, I carry myself with dignity, and I, and I still carry myself as, as a U.S. Marine. Once a Marine, always a Marine. That's our motto. A 
lot of that Marine Corps mentality and, and those lessons they instilled in me still play a role with me today. Beautiful day and a red hot night here at the theater at Virgin Hotels, Las Vegas. For many boxers, fear of losing plays an important role. Yet for Olympic silver medalist Shakur Stevenson, perhaps the greatest fear is not living up to the expectations of others and himself. This is from Mark Kriegel. Either Shakur starts throwing some combinations against this amateur, or don't be surprised when people start calling you a boring fighter. I feel like I was a little flat. I feel like I definitely could have performed better. She has all the tools yep. and all the ability to get this guy out of there. That's why we're calling for it. I feel like it's just an awkward fight, so he's coming in looking for one big punch. He got a lot of power. He was definitely one of the strongest fighters I ever faced. There is an opportunity for Shakur to step it up, but he needs to be willing to take the necessary risks. But I got the job done. I won every round. I dominated the fight. Shakur is worried about getting hit. That's all he's worried about. He doesn't like to get hit at all. Every fight ain't gonna be how you like it. Every fight ain't gonna be won in a pretty fashion. It's gonna be some ugly wins that you get, and you gotta take it. You gotta take your ugly wins with your pretty wins. These type of performances right here, honestly, they don't do anything for you. They really don't. If a knockout presents itself, we catch a guy, clip a guy, you gonna knock him out. If a guy don't can't hit him, that's not our point. We told you we was gonna beat him. Did we beat him? This fight right here that he just had, you know, against Nagatani, he learned a lot. He learned a whole lot that, you know, his mindset, you know, he just chilled out, thought about everything, and he's like hungry. He's way hungry. He had to learn to progress to the next level. And I feel like that's what it is. You know, every champion faces up. At some point in life, you're gonna get challenged. You're gonna see something different. It's gonna make you better or it's gonna make you weak. Well, I think that fight is gonna make you score way better. No. no. I mean, at the end of the day, you gotta understand, no. my last fight w was good for me, I feel like. I feel like I fought a real awkward opponent. Like, that was somebody who was awkward. It's hard to pinpoint and figure him out. Oh, oh. oh. I don't feel like Jamel gonna be any more awkward than him. So at the end of the day, I feel like Jamel is a, a solid fighter, but he got an awkward style. I don't think he gonna be any more awkward than the last dude I just fought, so I feel like it was real good that I fought that dude. How do you feel that people think that your last fight is who you are? You, you like that, right? You like that they feel that way, because that's not you, right? I don't care. You know, everybody had them off nights, but them off nights, I made sure I was victorious. You got to respect it at the end of the day. So. But I ain't, I ain't, that's in the past at the end of the day. I ain't even focused on that. I'm focused on Jamel. Jamel think I'm not focused on him, I'm focused on him. I'm ready for Jamel, man. While Stevenson remains undefeated as a pro, his opponent believes that two setbacks and a lifetime of overcoming Ooh. adversity have forged him into the champion he is today. Going into the Dennis Shavakov fight, I actually knew that I was kind of underprepared because of the short notice I have gotten for it. But at the time, I was undefeated. So, you know, the mindset is, OK, you know, whatever. I, I, I know what I'm doing. I, I got this. Russia, Dennis I think it came about in the second round. It's the first and last time I've actually been knocked down. And I was like, man, <laughs> it's rough in here, man. Like I, like, I mean, like, I feel the heat in the kitchen right now. And it was just like, but it's one of the things like, you know, I'm here, so I got to get through it. I got to get through it. I got I to gotta find a way. Eric's not in good shape. They may have to stop it. But he was just a better man that night. and. Fight that he stopped in the last round. But if I'm being honest, I felt like the second defeat, it hurt me more because I felt that I was robbed. The energy in my corner was, was kind of off. It's an uncomfortable feeling if your team is kind of feeling like, you know, in, in a panic mode, it takes away the sense of belief in yourself. It made me realize that I'm not a superman. I can, you know, suffer loss and defeat. 
It was more of a reality check afterwards, and I took it more as a lesson. Now I know where I need to be at in terms of a A-list fighter. I had to do some deep soul searching, but I knew I needed change. What I was dealing with, it wasn't working. Someone told me, so they just said, hey, you know, why don't you just reach out to um, Brian Bomack? Come on. When he left Mike Safford, he was a great boxer. He just needed to be sharpened up on some, you know, a few things like uh, too much movement. This is there. We just got to kind of form it up and put it in the fight box. Drop down in waves, you know, definitely too small for, for 37, 38, wherever the way he was fighting. Uh, uh, there, there you go. Deliberately front up there okay. and then set to him like that. And just get some, you know, uh, some great people around him. A camp where other champions are at and and the vibe is good and the family's good. And so, you know, he just feeds off that and, and we just moving forward. <laughs> First fight with Bo Mack was against Juan Pablo Sanchez. Fights like this are winner go home. Mel Herring, like he's got to win. I knew how much was riding on that one fight because it reminds you, like I said, I'm coming off a loss. I have to make my way up the ladder and I have to do it in, in dr dramatic fashion. That uh, Jamel Herring now hoping to change things in his career. He's going to have to work hard. And I just kept pushing forward to the point where it was so bad, the referee didn't stop it. The, the commissioner had, had got up from their chair to stop it because, you know, I was just a man on a mission, and I wasn't going to stop until I got the victory. It was all worth it in the end, and I told Bomek, I said, hey, put me in another one. Just keep bringing them to me. And, I, and I, I, I promise you, I will go out there and perform my best. Since teaming up with Brian Bo Mack McIntyre, the junior lightweight champion has won seven straight bouts, seized the WBO belt, and defended it three and times. Still, the WBO junior lightweight champion of the world. I owe a lot of credit to my team because they always say boxing is a, is a, is a lonely man sport. That always isn't true because if, if, without my corner, I don't think I could, I, I would be where I'm at today. To ready for his last fight, Shakur Stevenson spent his entire training camp amongst Jamel Herring's inner circle. As he trained alongside pound for pound great, Terence Crawford and head trainer, Brian Bomack McIntyre. You gotta understand where Shakur is coming from. His last fight, he trained with us. Now in this fight, he's going against us. Speed on the step up. There we go. I know all of his coaches. The coaches can't fight for you. They can give you a game plan, tell you what to do, but you're in the ring fighting. At the end of the day, I'm a better fighter than Jamel. Yet words only go so far. And on the other side of the ring, Jamel Herring and his trainer are looking to put old alliances aside in the name of business. I don't have nothing against Shakur or his team or any, anybody on that side. Jamel's my fighter, so that's who I'm gonna work with. It's just business, and the business gotta get done. I have no issues with Shakur. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of upset of the character that he's betraying because we never had any animosity up until recently. I'm like, bro, like, you and I never had an issue, so now you want to make our friends and, and, and people that we work with choose a side, and it, it's just not right. Right or not, come October 23rd, the score will be settled. I can't give advice to neither one of them. Both of them, my brothers. May the best man win. Deep down, Bud knows what it is. He know. He 100% he know. That's my big brother. In boxing, it's not supposed to matter who stands in the way. 
Yet, it always does. Even when a belt is on the line, there's always something that matters more. From stopping an opponent to the ever-present concept of respect. And when hunger, brashness, and a shot at the title all collide, fireworks follow. A shotgun blast by Shakur Stevenson! In a fight deeply rooted in youth versus experience and friend versus foe, already momentous stakes are amplified. For Shakur Stevenson, this is about proving himself and seizing what he believes is inevitably his. I know that this is the biggest fight he ever been in, even though he's a champion. But this fight is a little bit different. I'm coming to fight, and I'm coming to take his belt. For Jamel Herring, it's about silencing all doubters, especially the man across the ring. I love being a champion, but I think just being the first to say that you yeah, have a victory over him, that means more than anything. Because in here, it's always personal, even when they say it's not. And it never matters who stands in the way until it does. WBO Junior Lightweight Champion of the World. On the next Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Herring versus Stevenson. I've always had to deal with situations where they've always doubted me, even being the champion. But in those moments, I've always put on the best performances of my career. An absolute stutter. Shakur has a dream, and his dream is a quest. It's not something that has an ending once you've attained a championship. That's not it. It goes on and on and on. It's going to mean everything taking this belt from Jamil. It's going to put me in a position to have bigger fights. If you look at it now, the landscape, I'm actually the longest reigning world champion in the division, but yet I still keep getting doubted. But here I am. I'm still champion. I don't think anything that he brings is going to stop what I'm bringing.